Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to this session of my NPTEL course, Appreciating Linguistics or Typological Approach. So, um, we just got to know that these are the three different domains or dimensions of English consonant sounds. So, what I will do now, I will just let you know uh, each of the sound and its corresponding word. So, remember I am going to talk about the initial or final something like that. So, if I say the sound p as in pat, so that is the initial sound. So, the list is written over here, check it out first. Each of the phoneme has a corresponding word and I will just tell you which sound I refer to. When it is pat, the initial sound is p, bat initial sound is b like that. Okay? So, we are going to follow it. First phoneme, p as in pat, b as in bat, t as in tap, d for dog, k for kill, g for go, f for fan, v for van, s think, d that, s soap, j that is buzz final sound. Okay? So, until s all of them are initial sounds. If you check a z sound as in buzz, so that is the final sound. Then sh again initial, initial sound shout, zh that is the middle sound or word medial sound pleasure, z pleasure. Then it is again initial sound h hat, ch as in chair, this side on the left, j as in jump, m as in map, n as in nap. So, all of them are the word initial sounds. Then we have the third nasal sound, ng, that is the final, final sound of sing. When you utter the word sing, the final sound is the ng sound. Then, u as in light, r as in run, and w as in world. Finally, y as in yes. So, these are just one example each I have given for, um, for each of the phonemes, but the list is not restricted to this. You can always find more and um, maybe the assignments will have questions based on the uh, initial, medial and final sounds of such words. Okay. With this information, I would um, like to take you to the um, to the vowels. These are the ones you can um, easily find, I have already discussed with that. So, just for your information how the stops are produced, fricatives are produced, affricates are produced, nasals, liquids and glides, you have already, um, you already got to know about it. Okay. So, now let us look at the uh, speech sounds or the vowel sounds in English. Uh, if you remember the classification or the division carefully, uh, we had 20 vowel sounds and out of the 20 vowel sounds, we had uh, um, 5 of them, sorry 12 of them are pure vowels and 8 of them are diphthongs. And what are the diphthongs? The diphthongs are primarily the combination of 2 vowel sound together we are going to call it a diphthong. So, uh, what I will do, I will uh, check it uh, with, the f with the 12 pure vowels first. Out of this 12 pure vowels, you will have some of them are long sounds or long vowels, some of them are short vowels. So, the trick or the basic trick that I have here, look at the symbols given here. These are the symbols used for the vowels. So, any symbol which has these kind of two dots after the after it then you just remember that that is going to be a long vowel. Okay? So, let me read it, let me help you uh, with the pronunciation or how you should utter or how you should um, pronounce these sounds. So, first one is e, so as in sheep. right? So, the underlined part of the word sheep corresponds to the long vowel e. Then the second one is e as in ship. So, compare sheep with ship. So, when it is sheep, there is a long vowel, when it is ship, there is a short vowel. right? Then there are next two uh, vowel sounds, one is u, uh, 
the other one is u so u is as in good he is a good boy so when it is good so it corresponds to the short vowel u when it is shoot then it's going to be long vowel u and please note that there are this colon like structure that would help you to remember that these are the long ones then we have a as in bed pet or or let's say send so the middle sound the it's already underlined over here for the clarity in understanding you can easily follow that so this is bed as in a teacher a uh. so as in the last one the generally the r uh, when when you have the orthographic representation or the letter r that remains silent in most of the germanic languages for sure in english in most of the cases so when it is teacher so the last sound a uh, teacher a uh, so that's going to be the next vowel which is a short vowel then we have bird a uh, it's a longer one as in bird then we have do right another longer sound do o uh, longer one then we have in both bird and do in both the cases you will see there is this uh, um, colon like things then you have a that is cat bat a sound so that's here then we have up cup like that but it's a very small one very short sound that is a uh. then we have a ah, where the mouth is wide open far wide open a ah. so that's as in far car okay then there is a ah. okay on the book is on the table or oh, sound right so these are i'm going to talk about it in a very brief manner because eventually we'll move to phonological typology but this is the basic information that you need to know about english vowel sounds because a lot of examples are going to be given from this uh, this language so uh, this is the list of 12 vowels out of them five long ones which are um, which which you can check here with the colon like two dots thing then the rest of them are the short ones and then the corresponding words are given here the underlined section would rep like would relate uh, with the um, symbol so please check the table carefully and then i'm sure you're going to understand it in no time okay then out of this 12 uh, uh, vowel sounds we also have eight like besides or beyond this 12 vowel sounds we also have eight diphthongs and when i say diphthongs that's primarily the combination of two different vowel sounds together right so let me read it the first one is e o so when it is here please come here so e and a uh, they are together and generally remember you call it a diphthong only when they appear in one syllable if the syllables are different they wouldn't be considered as diphthongs anymore they'll be individual monophthongs or the pure vowels but if they happen to occur in one uh, syllable then it's going to be called as diphthong so these are the eight possible diphthongs in english so e o u o as in tourist poor then a o as in hair a i as in wait o i as in boy i as in my o as in show and au as in cow right so these are the symbols and their corresponding words please check the underlined things like which sounds or which two letters actually correspond to that sound so these are the eight diphthongs which are also a part of the english vowel sounds why we call them diphthong i have already mentioned combination of two pure vowels in one syllable that's more important and then these are the 12 uh, pure vowel sounds so along with this all the 44 if you remember uh, the division that we had all the 44 uh, sounds have been consolidated and compiled and then this is the discussion on that okay so now um, another interesting thing about uh phonemes or phonology um in a in a broader sense so uh we have to understand a new technological like or discipline specific jargon that we have in hand is allophones so uh until we understand allophones it will be tricky for us to understand what is phonetic typology or phonological typology so let's see what an allophone is allophones are 
variations of certain phonemes. Okay? If one phoneme can be represented in two different ways when they are occurred in, two in, many, in different parts of a word, then they would be known as allophones. So, why we are going to call it allophones? Because of the variations plus remember they also have very distinct articulatory and acoustic features. So, how they are produced and where they are produced, so that actually plays a vital role when you are trying to understand the um, allophones. For this uh, session, I will go, I am going to talk about English. So, in English, how we are uh, going to find out allophones, let us have a look at it. And if you notice here, you see I have written uh, the phoneme t and here we have t and t. So, one is called aspirated, this t is non-aspirated and this th is aspirated. Okay? So, this t and th, these are the allophones of the same phoneme t. So, t, t. So, when you say t, it is non-aspirated, when you say t, it is aspirated. Let us compare the pronunciation with top, the top of it. So, it is t, t, teacher. Um, I being an Indian English speaker, I generally do not have the variations in the aspirated and non-aspirated thing, though I am aware about theories, but then in practice, I generally do not have this, this difference, because my, my speech organs have been trained to speak um, Indian English in that sense. So, that is why, uh, please uh, pardon me for not making the very clear distinctions when I utter the sounds like t and t. But remember, one is in the British English or American English or any other varieties of English, there is a clear distinction between the aspirated t, uh, sorry, non aspirated t and aspirated t. So, these are the, so try to listen to the pronunciation of the words like top, stop, metal, and right. You will see that metal and right these are non aspirated ones and stop is would be or the, that would be an aspirated ones. So, how to identify which one is aspirated and which one is non aspirated? Again the same formula like the same experiment you have to conduct keep a palm keep your palm uh, before your mouth and try to pro, uh, try to produce the, the sounds like t and t, t, t. So, if you see or sorry if you feel the air pressure is more when you are throwing air out. If you feel that um, the, the you are throwing more air out, that will be the aspirated version. Less air, that will be the non-aspirated version, right? Similarly, k k and p p. So that also has aspirated and non-aspirated versions. My suggestion would be um, you should try for yourself um, for your language as well as in English. So, find out what are the different phonemes that English has which have allophonic variations. So, check the uh, phonetic boundary that we have. So, this the slanting bars, these are the phonemic boundary, right? And then um, this is the phoneme, and these are the allophones. So, the boundaries are going to be different. So, these are like parenthesis type, okay? Uh, or, or not parenthesis, these are basically the May, maybe you can call it square brackets. So, these are slashes and these are square brackets. Okay? So, one is phonetic, the other one is phonemic. Okay? So, phonetic uh, symbols will have a separate uh, kind of bar and phonemic symbols will have a separate kind of a bar. Okay? So, metal and right, these would be non-aspirated, top, stop would be uh, probably aspirated. So, similarly try it with k, k and uh, g. No, sorry, um, t, t, p and p. So, you can easily feel the difference between um, aspirated and non-aspirated ones in case of uh, in case of English, right. And my suggestion for you would be to uh, conduct similar kind of experiment in your own language, okay. Yeah. So, um, we um, got to know what an allophone is. And in, in, in at least in English, we have a couple of allophones. My suggestion for you would be to think about how it works in your own language. After that, I will introduce another um, discipline specific term that is syllables. So, 
So when we speak, we don't speak uh, the entire word sometimes at one go. Uh, it's a when when you are a native speaker, it comes to you naturally uh, to divide the syllables in your own language. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about it very briefly. What a syllable is and how it is important for us to understand phonetic typology or phonological typology, and what are the jargons that you might encounter in in the in in my future lessons or in my future lectures, right? So, what is a syllable? That is the first thing. A syllable is a part of the word that you speak at one go. When you say picture, so that means it has two syllables because you are taking a mild, very brief pause after you say pick. Um, so, first let us try to understand what is a syllable. A syllable is a chunk of word that you uh, speak or that you pronounce at one go without taking any pause, right? That is a syllable. I will give you a very simple example when you when you let us say there is a word picture. When you say picture, you are not speaking the entire uh, set of letters when you are trying to speak that the phonemes you are not speaking it at a go like at one go rather you are breaking it after pick. So, you are saying picture, picture. So, this brief pause that you are taking after pick that divides the word into two syllables. So, this is it, this is called a bisyllabic word. If a word has two syllables, it will be bisyllabic, one syllable, monosyllabic, more than that polysyllabic you can say. So, uh, when it is picture, pick is the first syllable, cha is the second syllable. Um, but think about a word like book. When you say book, you do not divide it, you, you are speaking the entire word at one go. So, this is a monosyllabic word, there is only one syllable. If you take a pause, then that divides the syllable, just remember. So, with that, we will just uh, find out what are the basic information that I would like you to uh, know as far as a syllable is concerned. So, each syllable will have uh, three major components. So, let me uh, kind of let me divide it into, I am um, going to draw a division over here and when I, when I say there is a syllable, the, you should always remember um, this kind of a classification. Okay. So, that is a syllable, uh, let me erase it and then let me write it properly. So, it is a syllable. So, when it is a syllable, it will have two major parts okay. um, and it is going to be, it will have something called onset and then this will be rhyme. It is not your literary rhyming pattern. Okay. So, this rhyme will have a nucleus, then you will have a coda. Okay. So, this coda um, in this case, this nucleus generally consists of a vowel sound. Okay. Onset generally consists of a consonant sound or sounds depending on the situation. Similarly, sound or sounds. Coda will also have consonant sound or sounds, right. This is the division or this is the classification um, you need to remember. But when you call it vowel sounds, then primarily it becomes a diphthong. So, I am going to erase the sounds from here. So, this is a consonant, this is a vowel and this is a consonant, right. So, that is how the division of syllable you need to remember. It will have an onset, then rhyme. Rhyme will have a nucleus and a coda, but it is not mandatory that all the, um, all the sounds like all the words will have consonant, will also have coda, uh, sorry, will also have onset, coda, but something which is mandatory that is vowel sound, like the vowel should be a mandatory component of it. The onset might be there, might not be there, coda might be there, might not be there, but what is mandatory, what is compulsory that is nucleus, right. So, now let us see what is an onset, what is a nucleus and what is a coda. So, the onset is the basic element, generally that is a consonant. Nucleus generally consists of a vowel and coda is any following consonant. So, that is how we are going to remember when we, uh, when we do the syllable division. Right. Now, let us see me, the words like me, no, 
in this case what is absent? Try to recall onset that is a consonant, nucleus that is a vowel, coda that is again a consonant. So, when you say me, what is the first phoneme? M, what is the second phoneme? E, right. So, in this case what is missing? The coda is missing, we do not have any coda, rather we have an onset then we have a nucleus. Same is the case with no, when you say no, n is a consonant which is the onset, o would be the vowel which is the nucleus. Now, compare this with two other words like cup and hat. So, when you say cup, what is the first sound? K. What is the second sound? A. Uh. And what is the third sound? P. So, K would be onset, A uh would be nucleus, and P would be coda. Similarly, hat. So, when you say hat, H would be onset, A would be nucleus, and T would be coda, right. So, this is just a very simple um, information that I wanted you to uh, know and then uh, we will talk about it more detail later. Then the other uh, technical jargon that I wanted to introduce today is consonant cluster. What is the meaning of consonant cluster? When two or more like one or more consonants are coming together in a like in a in a form of an onset or, uh, or, or coda depending on the situation. So, that would be known as consonant cluster. So, what is it? Let us read it combination of more than one consonants either in the onset or in the coda we are going to call it consonant cluster. So, we will have more examples and more discussions in the next session about syllables, onset, nucleus, coda and consonant clusters. So, please think about more words in English as well as in your own language and do some homework um, to find out if you encounter something interesting. Um, to decide like to discuss these kind of concepts in phonetics and phonology. Thank you, we will um, we'll talk about more on these issues in the next session, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.